All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna do physics controller on C sharp. So I have the editor open here. I just made a new folder and I call it physics controller. I'm gonna right click and create a world. Just call it physics controller. And I'm gonna open it and it's gonna be an empty little world with almost nothing in it. So in main player, I'm gonna remove the controlled, which makes it unable to move from uh, inputs and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click create a code and call it physics controller so. once that's done I'm actually gonna also add a little object that I'm gonna use as code and for the record I want to add a dummy object so if I press right click create node and choose no dummy you'll notice that it doesn't really have a physics tab meaning physics is unavailable for the no dummy so we're going to delete that and we're going to use something else which is called the object dummy so what the object dummy does is it has a basic property as the no dummy but it's uh, beauty is in the fact that it actually has physics so meaning you can actually um, code some physics into it. So I'm just gonna move the camera a little bit back so I can see the object. And the object itself is a little empty. So we're gonna right click, create a, no, a primitive and choose whatever primitive you like. I'm just gonna choose a sphere for this one. I'm just gonna click it, randomly click it. Since it's a child, if we reset the zero, it's going to be at the middle of the object itself. And looks a bit small. It looks a bit too big. I'm just going to make it half. And for the object dummy, I'm going to give it on the physics tab. We go to the type and we give it a rigid body physics. Now, it's not fully enabled yet unless we go to the shapes. And I'm going to choose the capsule and press add. Once that's added, I'm going to make the height into one. And now we have a little capsule. And to test it, we're going to click on the object dummy itself. I'm going to move it a little bit up into the sky and I'm going to press the simulate physics button. And with that, we have the object doing it correctly. To see the, the physics itself, we're going to go in helpers, go to physics and just click on shapes. And now we can see the object itself. So. If I press it, now you can see the bounds of the physics. So the next thing we're going to do is add a component or property and just click and drag the physics controller in there. So we're done with that. Now we open the code IDE. So we're going to do some coding with this. All right. So once we're in here, You'll notice that it actually very neatly puts everything for you guys together. So we're going to be here and we have everything set up here. So what we're going to do is first we're going to do a public float. Actually, it's easier if we do a private float speed max speed. And we're going to do a little bracket here and write show in editor. So once it re-imports here, we have that right here. I'm gonna make the speed like probably five. And I'm gonna make the max speed like 15 or something. Looks good enough, I guess. So once this is done, we're gonna add one more thing and it's gonna be a body rigid. I'm gonna call it main character. And now we have to initialize this because we wanna code the body rigid and we don't have any object yet until we make one so first things first we're gonna initialize the main character and we're gonna say it's node dot object body rigid and now it's initialized so when we go back to the physics tab we got a few options here that not that many people know of but when you make a shape an object it has its own automatic density and factors you can change it and all that and it's gonna 
go over here you can also press high priority contacts and then change it and everything but we we're not going to do any of that like shape based if we disable it we have the ability to change all that but for now we're going to keep it as it is and we're just going to talk about the main ones so in physics there's two types of forces that we add one is just a regular force and the other one's impulse in unigen for impulse we have two different types in there too and we're going to use impulse a lot we're going to use a linear impulse and an angular impulse so the l and the a the linear is a directional force which makes you move in that way and angular is a rotational force which makes you rotate that way so for linear scale we're going to leave everything one which means we're allowed to use movement around there but for angular we're going to restrict it on the x and y so it doesn't topple over or rotate it's just going to stay exactly in the same standing position the damping basically means once you stop giving it the force how long it will take to slow down to a stop and we're going to give it a five meaning just enough like half now ml basically means maximum linear and then velocity and the MAV basically means maximum angular. The linear velocity means how fast it will go for maximum speed and since we have maximum speed over here we're gonna do that in code. Angular velocity we're gonna keep it as infinite it's not gonna go that far and then this is frozen so we had freezable uh, ticked on. What freezable means is when an object gets to a certain speed so in our case is zero it's gonna stop physics simulating so it saves us some performance and we're gonna keep it as it is for now because we're not doing anything uh, technical yet so play around with these once you make a game and see which one works perfect for you so first things first we're gonna do the linear velocity so setting our max speed so we're gonna go to main character dot maximum linear velocity and we're gonna set it to max speed so that makes it that now we're not going to use update we're going to use something called update physics due to the fact that we're actually writing everything in physics we're going to have to use update physics so first things first if and then we're going to do the true so if input dot is key pressed and then it's going to ask for the key input dot key so if we press w let's give it a speed so what we're going to do is main character dot add linear impulse so it's going to add an impulse and we're going to add a forward direction impulse so if you know how to do that that's going to be a node with a small n and then we're going to get get world direction we're going to get the mathlib dot axis dot y which is the forward and then over here we're going to use the multiplier and we're going to say speed so it's going to multiply it by that much amount so that's done for the w let's just copy paste it a few times and we're going to change a few stuff s a and then for this one D now for our case on s we're gonna add it on the negative so we're just gonna add an n before the y and that's done now for a and D we want rotation rather than movement on that side now if you just wanted to move that way you're just gonna say NX and X but we want to rotate for this time so add angular impulse and that's gonna give us a rotation and if you remember correctly we remove the angular scale on the X and Y me leaving Z open meaning we can only rotate on Z and if you remember correctly rotating on Z means looking left and right so we're gonna go here we're gonna add an angular impulse and we're gonna rotate it by just an amount and it's gonna rotate really fast but we're gonna rotate it by negative Z which means it's gonna rotate by one side and the other one we're gonna rotate it by Z since if we just put 
brackets empty brackets it defaults to negative z so i'm not gonna write that down i'm a little lazy so that should be the main code to moving with physics if we press play now if we press up and down it moves by our speed and it goes by an by a maximum of 15 that we set now if we rotate it's rotating but you can't see it so I'm gonna have to just change the object a little bit like this and then probably do this and then if I remember correctly I made another mistake which is not changing the add angular impulse and now if I press play it rotates and it rotates too fast so we're gonna fix that by adding the uh, multiplication with an I IFPS so, uh, game dot IFPS and I'm gonna do the same over here so now we have it rotating properly and we can do a new uh, float variable which we can add with a multiplication we got the movement up and down and then we got left and right working properly well of course it's reversed because I don't remember my directions sometimes now we got the basics of it done and that's technically it I don't really see anything else I can do I can talk about a few things but I think that's the basics of physics now the beauty of this type of controller is that if I were to say have terrain that's all wobbly wonky and have like mountains and stuff this will calculate it properly it's not gonna go through an object but the it has a cost and that is it's not precise so if you were to do like chess or like turn-based or like grid-based movement it's completely garbage for it but if you were to have like 3d type or like open world movement then this is one of the better options to choose because it simulates almost everything with physics so yeah i guess that's the basics don't really have anything else to say other than next episode we're gonna do some kind of camera control because if i had the object just flying all the way to like in the corner how's the camera gonna catch up so i guess next episode we're gonna do controller of cameras until next time i guess see ya